Well, hello and welcome back to another edition of the Hiking Journal. In this episode, Dave, Jerry, and I explore the High Sierra backcountry of Yosemite National Park, and we visit one of the High Sierra Trail Camps at Scenic May Lake. This was a trip that wasn't supposed to be. Earlier in the year, I had applied for a permit for the Little Lakes Valley Trail above Rock Creek, a nice and easy but high elevation backpack trip to one of the most stunning views in the Sierras. I also reserved a campsite at the nearby East Fork Campground below Rock Creek to acclimate before our hike. On the last day of August, just only 10 days before our trip, I got the disturbing news that the entire National Forest System in California was suddenly closed due to high fire danger. Soon the dreaded emails began to stream in. First was the email from Recreation.gov, canceling my wilderness permit for the Jim Lakes Trail in Little Lakes Valley followed shortly by the cancellation of my campsite reservation at the East Fork Campground below Rock Creek. I wasn't worried so much about the money I'd laid out in advance for the reservations. This would be refunded. What troubled me the most was that our highly anticipated adventure was canceled. Or was it? When I got the cancellation email on my phone, I immediately jumped on the computer, looking for alternate destinations. Within a few minutes at looking at statewide maps, it hit me. Yosemite National Park was somehow excluded from the closure. Now, wilderness permits for backcountry trails in Yosemite usually fill up within minutes of posting, months in advance. So the odds of finding any trail still open at this late junction were pretty dim. Luckily, I found a few unclaimed spots for the May Lake Trail to the High Sierra Camp. This was the break I was waiting for. I quickly filled in the permit reservation form and sent it off with a click. Now the waiting began. Within a few days, I got the good news that our permit reservation was issued, but that was only one of the problems. Normally, we head up the day before our adventure to pick up our wilderness permit and set up a car camp to acclimate. By this late junction, there wasn't a campsite in Yosemite to be had. Now, I remembered that even though the National Forest campgrounds were closed, the private campgrounds had been spared. In a few minutes of searching, I located the Bridgeport Marina and Campground on Hip Camp in the nearby town of Bridgeport, California, about 45 minutes from the Tioga Pass entrance into Yosemite. I had never been to Bridgeport Reservoir before, but their websites showed tent campsites right next to the lake. Small sites were closely spaced, but they did have fire pits and picnic tables and flush toilets and even Wi-Fi. The odds for a successful backpack trip were finally starting to look up. When the morning of our adventure came, we were in no hurry this time. No 4 a.m. wake-up call, no long commute in the dark, because we couldn't even check into our campsite in Bridgeport till 2 p.m. I picked up Dave at the Metrolink train station in Corona just like normal, and we headed up scenic Highway 395 toward the High Sierras. From here, we drove past iconic High Sierra hiking towns of Lone Pine, Independence, and Big Pine, before stopping off at the Holy Smoke Barbecue in Bishop. Last time Jerry and I were up this way, the line wrapped all the way around the building and all we could do was drool at the scent of sweet barbecue as it wafted past the packed parking lot. Today though, we were in luck and we found a parking spot and headed inside. Now I've been to quite a few barbecue joints in my life, but this one's got to be near the top. The barbecue beans were about the best I've ever had. And even though I was nursing a painfully abscessed tooth, I somehow managed to chew through the pulled pork sandwich like a beaver on fresh cedar. The ghost pepper and spicy sauces were my favorites, even though I knew I'd pay for it later. We had one last stop in Bishop for gasoline, and although it was tough paying $4.55 a gallon, it beat the gouging we'd get in Lee Vining when it was $5.69. After lunch, we finished our drive past Tom's Place, our original turnoff for the Rock Creek Lake adventure, Mammoth Lakes and Mono Lake before dropping down into Bridgeport. We were still a little early and the sun was still warm, so we stopped off on Main Street for a quick tour of quaint Bridgeport. We backed into some parking spots in front of the historic Bridgeport Inn and Motor Motel, just in time to check out a few classic cars from a Saturday afternoon car show right out front of a small brewery in town. We had some time to kill, so we walked around the old courthouse and headed toward the Jolly Cone, a classic old-fashioned walk-up ice cream stand painted white with red trim. Here we ordered some refreshing ice cream to settle our stomachs from the rich barbecue and the ghost pepper sauce. 
We sat on some red painted picnic tables and enjoyed the warm sun that angled under the matching umbrella. When we were finished, the short drive to Bridgeport Reservoir and Marina was just a few minutes away. When I checked into the office, the friendly woman gave me a map of the campground and pointed out our parking lot. She told us there might not be enough room for two vehicles, but told us if we had any trouble we could just come back to the office. We drove over to my reserve campsite number 16 and immediately noticed exactly just how small it was. That's when we noticed the water, or lack of. The Bridgeport Reservoir water level was so low it had receded a quarter mile from the campsite, maybe even further. It looked like the once popular fishing destination was reduced to a shallow, muddy puddle. Now, we all knew that the camp host couldn't do much about the shrinking water level, but this campsite just wasn't going to do it. We headed back to the camp office and Dave jumped out of the jeep and went in to negotiate a change. Luckily, the friendly woman understood our plight and told us just to go out and pick another one, maybe one of the RV sites since they were a little bit larger. We settled on RV space number 24, just a hundred feet from our original tent site, but it was a little more spacious. It still wasn't big enough for Jerry's Tahoe and two tents, but it was only for one night, so we figured we just had to make the best of it. Jerry slid out his easy up awning out of the back of his Tahoe, and we set it up for some welcome shade. Here we sat under the easy up, staring out across the dried up lake, trying to imagine what it looked like in better days. Now Dave and I had had a few beers that I had brought more for the graphics on the cans and the flavor before we decided to explore the lake. Wow, that's all I could say when we walked down the sandy path to what normally would have been Lake's Edge. Shorebirds waded ankle deep pecking at insects stuck in the mud. Grasses and reeds that would have normally been under the water lay dried and burnt, caked in gray-brown mud. My flip-flop sunk through the crust into the mud as we tried to get closer to the water. This was bad. This was really bad. Thinking back to that long hot shower I took this morning or the sprinklers that watered my nice green lawn, I had no idea the effects of the drought were so harsh. Remnants of beer cans and trash that had fallen overboard from fishing boats now lay exposed in the sun like fossils. Well, we picked a campsite at Bridgeport Reservoir. The water is right at the edge of the camp. Well, maybe 10 years ago. I think we can walk all the way across the reservoir. That's how low this water is right now. What a shame. Probably in its day, there were boats out here, not now. Dave and Jerry explored the shoreline until I noticed a sign. Toxins from algae in the water can harm people and kill animals. We walked around the lake toward the marina that once held fishing boats for rent. The concrete launch ramp lay a quarter mile from the water, and grass grew lush and green where 10 feet of water must have been. The Bridgeport Reservoir Marina life ring hung eerily on a pipe fence. When we went back to our campsite, there wasn't much left for us to do except wait for nightfall and the magnificent star show to begin. Dave didn't feel the need to set up his tent and slept in Jerry's reclining camp chair. I slept in the back of the Jeep, no sense digging out our tent since they most likely wouldn't fit in our campsite anyway. We sat behind the vehicle, staring into the night sky, looking for meteors and satellites, but didn't have much luck tonight. When we woke, we made a quick breakfast, rearranged our gear, and loaded up our backpacks for the trip to begin. All we had to do was drive 45 minutes from Bridgeport to the Tioga Pass entrance of Yosemite National Park and stop by the Wilderness Ranger's office in Tuolumne Meadows to pick up our permit. As we neared the park entrance, we noticed several hikers, or rather runners, or walkers, walking up the steep road toward the 10,000-foot entrance with numbers on their backs. This was a long and steep pull with very few aid stations. I guess it was the Tioga Pass Hill Run, a challenging 12.4-mile run, gaining 3,200 feet of elevation along the shoulder of one of the most scenic highways in the country. When we finally reached the Tioga Pass entrance to Yosemite National Park, a small crowd had gathered to congratulate the survivors of this grueling run. Now every time I pass through Tioga Pass, I'm quickly reminded about why I come up here. The views of golden yellow grasses, the crisp clean creeks, and the stunning alpine peaks make this long six-hour drive worth it. Now I was required to stop by the Wilderness Permit Office to complete my reservation. 
I had to listen to a lengthy and somewhat entertaining lecture of the Leave No Trace principles by a young park ranger before he handed me my yellow permit. Permit secured, we finally headed past scenic Tuolumne Meadows in the edge of Tenaya Lake. Lots of construction was taking place inside the park today. Almost every parking lot was closed for repairs and improvements. It was a welcome sight when we saw an open spot along the shoulder of the highway next to the Murphy Creek Trailhead. There I parked the Jeep. Here I drop off my vehicle, secure whatever scented items I had in the Jeep in the bear-proof lockers across the street, and transfer Dave and my pack into the Tahoe. We only had a short drive past Olmstead Point before we arrived at the turnoff to the May Lake Trailhead. Jerry drove slowly up the narrow paved road to the parking area and we unloaded our packs. Here the parking lot was crowded, as this is a popular day hike destination. Luckily, Jerry found a spot to park near the restroom and the trailhead. When all was secured, we started up the May Lakes Trail to begin our adventure. Well, welcome back to the journal. In this episode, we're in Yosemite National Park. This is a last minute trip that we did. We were supposed to go to Little Lakes Valley in the Inyo National Forest, and they decided to close the entire forest down. So my campsite reservation was canceled. Our wilderness permit was canceled. And uh, all we could do was shoot for something in Yosemite National Park. Puffing and puffing, this is the uh, heaviest pack I've ever carried. Uh, this first day is a short day, really short. It's only about a mile and a half from the trailhead to May Lake, which is one of the High Sierra camps, which is closed due to COVID. So we're gonna go up and see uh, May Lake. It's one of the few CIA, uh, High Sierra camps we haven't seen yet. So, yeah, I'm carrying about 40 pounds and I can feel it already. So that'll be an easy trip to May Lake. And uh, since we didn't get to uh, really camp out the day before and acclimate, this will help us out. Whew. I'll be pretty busy. It's a popular day hike destination as well. You know, I'm wearing the uh, McGregor tartan today, and hopefully up here in a little bit to give you a better look at it. A little bit of red tartan today. Well, we're just about uh, a little less than a mile up the May Lake Trail and off in the distance across the valley we can see Cathedral Spire and way off in the distances we can see Clouds Rest and Half Dome so how cool is that huh? Great spot, nice good breeze up here. We're not too far from May Lakes, and uh, a lot of people have passed us on the trail up and down. Everybody's really super friendly. Yeah, this is a it's a great day hike destination up here. Tremendous views. We've got uh, Half Dome and Clouds Rest and Peaky Spire in the background. It's awesome. Well, we finally reached May Lake. It was a short hike, but 
it was nice. It had great views overlooking the valley over toward Clouds Rest and Half Dome, Cathedral Spire in the background. But in the meantime, we're going to enjoy this early arrival at May Lake. It's beautiful up here. Crystal clear skies. There's no smoke this year. We do have to stay in the backpackers campground next to High Sierra Camp. The uh, High Sierra Camp is closed for the season and for the year for COVID. And uh, we are allowed to stay up here. And believe it or not, we are allowed to actually have a fire. So we have a small fire ring by our campsite. We've collected some down wood that's small. We're just going to have a really subdued fire just for ambiance a little bit tonight. In the meantime, we're going to enjoy this nice view of May Lake in the High Sierras in Yosemite National Park. Well, it looks like we picked a good campsite here at uh, May Lakes. The lake is right there, and we're close enough to get a view of the lake, but far enough away to meet regulations. We're at least 100 feet away. And Dave is putting up his tent. Jerry's taking out the footprint. A nice big, wide, flat, level spot, it appears. I'm going to be set up down here. That little open flat spot down there. I'll get to that in a minute. Well, we finally got the camp established here at May Lake. Uh, I have a nice flat boulder up here. I can lay some of my stuff. I just put the plastic down so I could put some of the contents of my pack and the bear can on there so I don't get all dirty and sappy. And uh, over here, this is the location I picked for my Lan Chan 1 tent. Been a while since I used it, so I had a little trouble putting it up, but it's not the best pitch, but it'll work. And uh, I'll give you a, a little bit of a not quite a 360, but I'll give you a view of what it looks like. It's plenty big enough for me. I'm about 5'11". It's good till about somebody about six foot. I've got my sleeping pad in there, a sleeping pad, which is a thermo rest all season. I've got my Marmot Never Winter 32 degree down bag. I also have a Cedar Summit thermo reactor bag liner. It'll give me a few extra degrees. That's an old sleeping bag, so might need a few extra degrees. It might get down to the low 30s tonight. I uh, also got a self-inflating pillow in there. So, and the best part about my setup is that not only does it have a view of the rest of the camp as we spin around, it also has a great view through the trees of May Lake. So it's nice and warm in the sun. It's probably 65, but uh, in the shade, that wind whistles through the trees and it gets a little chilly. So I'm sure it's gonna be chilly tonight. Now, Jerry's set up over here. He's got his Marmot Limelight tent set up in this spot. And Jerry's hanging out in his, uh, you know, hammock. Single nest. He's got the single nest hammock. It's a double nest. Is it just twice? Yeah, it's about one and a half width. I don't think you can fit two people side by side. I don't know how safe it'd be anyway. You'd probably flip right out. But he's got a view of the lake. A great view from there. And then Dave's got his, uh, his tent. His, he's got a big Agnex, a big Agnes... I always forget what it is. Dave's in there taking a quick nap. Not long, mile and a half hike to the lake. <laughs> it's like our, our shortest adventure ever. But you know what? We're just lucky that we're able to get out here because uh, with COVID and the forest fire closures, uh, our original plans fell through. And at the last minute, I was able to snag a couple of permits for May Lake. And boy, what a beautiful sight. Off to the left is Mount Hoffman. It's uh, over to the left over there. I'll get you a better shot here in a second. Um, that's where we're gonna go tomorrow for a day hike. But today we're gonna take it easy because we're gonna be, uh, we're a little over 9,000 feet. We really didn't get a chance to acclimate real well. So uh, it's gonna be nice to have that little extra time and only do a day hike tomorrow. Instead of climbing over a pass with a heavy pack, we're only going to be doing a day hike, so that'll be pretty easy. And we did see a sign back there that this lake, May Lake, 
is a source of drinking water and there's no swimming so that's kind of odd and the high sierra camp is here the high sierra camps are over that direction uh, and in a few minutes after we get rested we're gonna grab our water bottles secure our beer cans and uh, we're gonna head over to the other side of the lake that's tucked into the trees there we're gonna check out the uh, high sierra camps at may lake it's closed for the season and for the year because of covid so uh We'll see what an abandoned High Sierra camp looks like. And we'll check that out before we come back to camp and uh, fire up our stoves for some dinner tonight. And this is something you don't see very often at a High Sierra lake. A water, a water valve. They said this is a municipal source of water. So uh, maybe at some point they piped this water underground to the high sierra camps or maybe it flows downstream to the trailhead and the restrooms and the toilets who knows well these are the uh, high sierra camps at May Lake, and because of COVID, they're closed right now. And I'm sure the fire restrictions don't help, but they've been, they've been closed all year. So if you were lucky enough to draw a lottery ticket to get to stay in the High Sierra Camp at May Lake, this is where you'd be. This is probably a mess tent right here it has a concrete pad and you see all the frames are made down uh, that might be uh that might be the kitchen i don't really know we do a walk around here some other structures they have showers here they uh, put on quite the dinner show here there's another tent that's still up another skeletonized frame here at Main Lake, they have bare boxes for the people that come up here. There's some more tent pads for the canvas tents. If you come up here, all you need to bring is some enough snacks for lunch and some bedding, and they provide the rest. But it's a shame that it's closed due to COVID. Looks like beer boxes are knocked over for some reason. We'll go scout out some more of the buildings over here. High Sierra Camps are one of the most famous locations here in the Sierras. There's, I think there's five of them. Merced Lake, May Lake, Glen Allen, Vogelsang. And I probably missed one somewhere. We've been to all of them, but Merced and this one, that's why we wanted to come to this one on this adventure. Let's go check out this stone building. Look at the roof on that thing. How cool is that? I wonder how many years this has been here. Long time. Well, there's a deer over there, a doe. I climbed up top of this hill. Oh, there's two of them. I'm already out of breath. Hey, yeah, they're working their way up the trail. And we might see deer coming into our camp tonight along with bear and who knows what else. Pads rest. We're the same peak we were that way last year. You know, as I'm working my way up top of this steep hill above May Lake, a couple of deer just ran over the side here and down the slope. But from up here, you have a tremendous view of the valley. Yosemite Valley down below, way off in the distance, 
you can see Tenaya Lake down there. What a tremendous shot. And I'll spin you around here. I'll get up a little higher. So we do have Tenaya Lake over there. We've got part of Cathedral Spire that direction. We have Vogelsang Peak over there, along with to the right of it, just to the left of that tree is Clouds Rest. And way off in the distance on the right is Half Dome. All of that is visible from right here on this fabulous spot overlooking Yosemite Valley. Passing him for manganate a little bit to this room. 